Okay, so we're uh, gonna take a look quick at Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich and the Laws of Success. People ask me all the time what books I read and what books I advise them to read as parents, coaches, trainers, and also for their student athletes to read. This is definitely one of the top books. Um, it has been for a long, long time. There's so many unbelievable things uh, that are inside of the book and just every time you read it, you get something good out of it. Um, in the book, Napoleon uh, Hill talks about building a temple of success. And if you go to lesson 10, I think my favorite paragraph in the entire book, I'm just going to read it really quick, is this. This lesson will bring you a conception of thought which may carry you far above the level to which you have risen by evolutionary processes to which you have been subjected in the past. And for this reason, you should not be disappointed if, at first reading, you do not fully understand it. The most of us disbelieve that which we cannot understand, and it is with this knowledge of this human tendency in mind that I caution you against closing your mind if you do not grasp all that is in this lesson at first reading. Now, the funny thing about that is, um, I think in, in the section that this is from, it's the section is called Accurate Thought. The funny thing about it is the fact that most people misunderstand what the entire section is about. I'm not going to give it away. I mean, you need to go and do the work if you're going to try and actually get something out of it. Um, some of the stuff that I think is really interesting out of the book is the fact that I always see people in the field of human performance and personal development basically referring back to this book all the time. They don't mention it and maybe they're not even aware of the fact that that's what they're getting the information from. But it's such a good book to base the start of, or you could already be started, but the start is, is a good point for whether you're a parent, teacher, coach, or athlete of getting a better knowledge of human performance. And in, in the book where it gets to the laws of success, there's 15 of them. Um, the first one is a definite chief aim. So definite chief aim means basically your purpose and it gets it's about getting clear on goal setting as well. And one of the things that's interesting is if you tie this in with Charles Duhigg's, uh, you know, his books on habits and stuff like that and understanding um, even Mel Robbins talks about in her um, five second rule, you talk about um, the connectiveness between understanding what your goals are, what your chief aim is, and then kind of that habit loop. And, and that's what the, that's part of what the five second rule is about. Um, the story with her five, the five second rule basically is this, um, she had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of challenges going on in life and she was struggling and she was, um, relying on some things that weren't so healthy to kind of help her cope with the stress, um, of dealing with some of the negativity that was, um, being experienced in her environment. And so she was hitting the snooze bar a lot in the morning. And I guess one night after, uh, one morning after she had gone to bed and had seen like a spaceship launch or something like that to the day before from NASA, she hit the snooze bar in the morning and then she just decided she couldn't hit the snooze bar anymore. And so she counted backwards five, four, three, two, one, just like, you know, Houston, we have liftoff and she jumped up out of bed. Anyways, she started doing this more and more in her world and realizing um, how effective it was for not hitting the snooze bar on life, so to speak. Anyways, how this ties into a definite chief aim is the fact that, um, like Charles Duhigg talks about in his um, habit loops, you have cues, routines, and then you have your reward. And so the cue is her five, four, three, two, one. The routine then is, you know, getting up and taking change, uh, making change happen, taking action. And then the reward is, you know, the 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 follow through of actually doing that and then you get that kind of um you know you, you get that you feel good you feel like you've accomplished something and so it's about replacing old habits with new habits and that five second um countdown is kind of your cue but it's but it ties back into your goals and your definite chief aim and so the funny thing is by having that goal what happens is um they talk about in both of those books, stimulating your inner wisdom and the awareness of what you're trying to accomplish. And so that's talking about, you know, your inner wisdom is about like, let's say, 
I decide that I want to um, uh, get go to an Ivy League school or something, and I've I have that as my chief aim um, or purpose or next big goal or whatever you want to call it. Then all of a sudden I start like becoming more aware of what is involved in becoming an Ivy League student, and then the next thing you know, my my brain starts having like little pings going off as I walk by a book that might be helpful or I see something on TV that might be helpful or there's maybe a connection that I need to make or my whatever I need, I, need, I, I stumble upon, you know, some sort of SAT review course or whatever. It's, it's those, it's a aw greater awareness to the things that are going to pull you towards that, um, that definite chief aim. So anyways, that's the first one. We're going to cover the other ones really quick. That was one. So the next one is self-confidence. That's pretty obvious. Um, self-confidence. Actually, one of the funny things uh, somebody asked me um, about what my description or what my definition of like real confidence was. And I remember there was a, uh, there was, uh, a poster and it basically said... Um, Self-confidence is not being afraid to fail, um, knowing who you are and what you want, always loving yourself, um, not flattering other people for like the sake of flattering, uh, not judging others, reveal, not being afraid to reveal your weakness, um, don't seek or not seeking the approval of others, not being afraid to sit in silence, um, not shifting responsibility off from yourself, and um, smiling only when you mean it. And I, I believe like that's, a, that's a pretty good, um, start for self-confidence. And, um, that hopefully explains it a little bit. Habit of saving. That's the next one. Um, number three, and that doesn't just mean financial. That means, um, your rest recovery and things of that nature. Initiative and leadership. Um, that's another one that's fairly obvious. Uh, we have a lot of people that, if you get clear on your chief aim, you should have initiative. Otherwise, you're probably not clear on your chief aim. It means if, if you're hitting the snooze bar on, you know, on getting up in the morning or doing things that are going to be helpful for you in life, then you're, again, you're probably not clear on your chief aim um, because you'd, otherwise you'd have initiative. Imagination, uh, creativity, that's a big one. That's a flow trigger. Um, if you're having great imagination, you're usually going to put yourself in the zone or in the flow state, or some people call it getting, uh, getting in the gap. Uh, that's what Wayne Dyer calls it. I believe uh, Esther and Jerry Hicks have their uh, their own uh, terminology for it, and, and there's a number of different people out there that have their different being in the vortex or whatever. So wh whatever way you define it, it's basically being locked into like a flow state. Uh, if you're sports, that's what you're going to go to. Enthusiasm, uh, that just means um, just putting some positive energy into what you're doing. Sometimes you just need to get up and move, and that's helpful for that. Um, Self-control, uh, that, that could be you know, connected with discipline. That's, that's basically just saying if you have a chief aim and you know what you should be doing, then you're willing to stick to that, and you're not going to veer off course just because it's um, inconvenient or if there's something in the short term that you want to do, you know, if, if you're real clear on what you want to do, then self-control and discipline is choosing what you want to do long term over what might feel good in the short term. Then habit of doing more than what you're paid for. This is a big one too, as it relates to being successful in business and in life. Um, and relationships. So if you're being paid to do something, it's delivering, you know, on the, those goods, so to speak. So if you're being paid to, uh, if I'm being paid to coach, then I need to coach and I need to take responsibility for being the best coach that I can possibly be, regardless of what the student athlete does. Uh, pleasing personality, that means, you know, having an attitude of gratitude. Um, accurate thought, accurate thought was the one that we had read that's a pretty deep, deep uh, lesson to learn. And it's mostly about understanding facts and facts that are relative to your the purpose of your chief aim. Then the next one is concentration and understanding how to focus and what you focus on um, expands. So that the lack there of 
an understanding that what you focus on expands can really, really get things distorted for you. Meaning, um, there's a good example that Tony Robbins always uses is if you come home from work and you haven't had time to um, decompress and you're upset and you, you come home and you see your kids or your partner immediately and then all of a sudden you project onto them this negativity if that's what you had at work. Or if you had excitement at work, it's coming home and, and being excited about things and that's a good thing. Um, but again, it's you know it's it all comes down to focus and concentration. Cooperation is the next one. Cooperation. Um, I believe one of the things that's uh, that I like from a seminar that I saw recently. I'm trying to think of which one it was, but they're talking about um, cooperative components uh, for the person who's kind of more of an engineer or more of a you know a tool person, and um, and to think about the interconnectedness of the stuff. So. If you're, if you're willing to embrace cooperation, things can move so much more swiftly. If you're going to try and fight cooperation and you're going to try and go it alone, that's a much more difficult task. It can be done, um, and there's some times when that might be easier, but you know, in the end, cooperation is really, really key. And it, it just think about if you're trying to I go back to this one, if you're trying to teach your, your kid how to tie their shoes, in the short term, you can just tie their shoes for them. But in the long term, if you don't get them to cooperate and learn how to actually tie their shoes, you're going to you're gonna lose a lot of time in life. And, and it's not going to help that person either. Failure. Failure is um, the next subject, um, one of the last ones. And it's it's a tough one. Most people understand misunderstand failure. Um, it's not something that they're looking towards. Not every, you know you don't like to fail, but at the same time, on the other side of failure, usually is a reward and you know a huge victory if you're willing to examine it and look at it and um, you know and, and learn from it and move forward. Then we have tolerance. Tolerance doesn't mean being pushed around. It doesn't mean that you're accepting other people doing things that are inappropriate or that are against your principles or beliefs or value system. It just means that you are accepting um, of the now and then you can take action moving forward in a different way, but there's, it's not a necessity most of the time to fight what is going on. So tolerance and appreciation and an awareness of your current situation and then that way you can move forward. Then the last one is the golden rule, which obviously is do unto others as you'd have done to you, which just means, you know, being, you know, if you're looking to receive something, then you need to be willing to give something. And if you can't give something away, then you then you won't receive something either. So the, the thing is, um, that's kind of, in a roundabout way, that's, the law of attraction, I guess, if you, if you want to go there, if you, if you are not comfortable with that, then don't go there. Just think about do unto others as you've had done to you or you'd have done to you. So that's kind of the book in a, in a nutshell. Um, that's what the cover looks like. If you don't have this book or audio book in your book uh, collection for yourself or for your student athletes, um, or your kids or whatever, I, you have to get it. I mean, you, you really can't uh, be somebody who's working with student athletes, whether you're a parent, a teacher, or a coach, or um, a trainer, and not actually know this book inside and out, uh, and really consider yourself somebody who's doing your best. Hopefully that was helpful. And again, that was Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, and the Laws of Success, or the Law of Success. It's really the Laws of Success. But again, this is when he says think and grow rich, this is not about monetary stuff, although it could be.